Hey everyone, welcome to the official gear review. I'm Chad. Today I want to go over different sleeping systems you can use in cold weather backpacking. First, I kind of wanted to go over something I alluded to last week. Um, one of the tones that I want to set in this channel is I don't want to nitpick the details of how you like to camp. Uh, one of the things I noticed about different gear reviews over the last year is that sometimes if you didn't pick the lightest weight option, it was the wrong one. And that's just me being honest, is that it seems like that's kind of the tone sometimes. But uh, whether you sleep on a, a closed cell foam pad, an insulated air pad, um, a self-inflating pad, or even a cot, um, as long as it's a sensible option, I feel like it's really up to you what you want to carry. Um, you know, and if you carry like a 20-pound pack or you carry a 27-pound pack, it really doesn't matter as long as you're comfortable and that it's sensible at the same time. So one of the things that I want to do, because there are a lot of good things about each option and they do work really well for different people, is I just want to share like the benefits of, of each thing and then let you make the decision for yourself. Uh, because there are times that it's been really beneficial to sleep on a closed cell foam pad or to have that insulated air pad. And there are some times that I've chosen a cot and I really enjoyed it. Um, some people might want to splurge on their cooking system and carry a French press or a, a big stove that they can fry potatoes in or whatever they want to do. And as long as it's a sensible option for backpacking anyways, camping you can kind of carry what you want. But particularly when you're like backpacking, uh, uh, it you know you can you can kind of do it however you want to so uh, I'm gonna go over the closed cell foam pad the insulated air pad and the cot and how you and uh, a lightweight cot and how you can uh, you can kind of use all of those to your advantage in different in different circumstances so let's go ahead and go over okay so the first option I want to go over is the closed cell foam pad this makes for a really good option in cold weather backpacking uh, initially one of the most obvious reasons that it's a good option is that it's really lightweight. Uh, but I think one of the cooler options uh, that goes along with this is that it's really fast. So if you're one of those people who can just like, when you, when you get to camp, you're just ready to go to sleep, you literally just throw it out and you're good to go. You just pull out your sleeping bag and that's it. Also too, in the morning, whenever you're breaking down and you're ready to just hit the trail, you don't have to, like with an insulated air pad, you don't have to like squeeze all the air out, then sit it back and roll it up, make sure everything you know, it was packed down nice and neat. That way you can get it in the stuff sack and then go. You literally just roll this up, strap it to your pack and go. This is also, uh, we use these a lot in the military, so it's 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 got a big advantage in tactical situations too, but we're, and I know we're talking about backpacking, but uh, so speed is a really big advantage to having this. One of the downsides I would say to using this below 20 degree weather is there's not a lot of foam pads out there except this big Agnes. Uh, this one's actually great, has like an R value of 4, I believe, but a lot of the closed cell foam pads out there only have like a 2 to 3 R value rating. So, uh, once you get below 20 degrees, um, these really have to be paired with something else, um, whether it's two uh, foam pads or it's this and an insulated air pad. Uh, so, it does make for good, it, do, it is a good option in cold weather or in chilly weather, but um, when you get below that, you really gotta have something else. Uh, and also too, this is good because it can't pop. Um, it can handle a lot of damage, so there's a lot of options to it. Uh, and if you like a firm night's sleep, this is good. So yeah, so keep all those things in mind whenever you're picking uh, whether you wanna use one of these or not. Okay, the second option I wanna talk about are insulated air pads. These are really good options as well in cold weather backpacking. Obviously, one of the initial reasons is that they are extremely comfortable. Most of them now have micro adjustment valves where you can let out small amounts of pressure until you can sink down in it and get it just the way that you want for a good night's sleep. Another good advantage to picking these is that there's a wide variety you can choose from. You can pick air pads that have no insulation at all, or you can pick air pads that have like R value ratings of like nine and you can sleep in some of the coldest temperatures that it's possible to backpack in. So uh, this one I think is rated for like 10, 15 degrees for a comfort rating. Um, and I used that when I was on the AT for a couple of weeks. And there were times that it got down into single digits. And, uh, and I stayed pretty warm, but I also had a zero degree sleeping bag. One of the, I wouldn't even say it's a downside, it's just a, a thing that you want to be cautious of, is you have to be really cognizant of where you're laying this down. These things can pop really easy. The last night of my trip, 
I heard somebody's air pad pop and they had to hike 16 miles back the next day to the NOC just so that they could buy another one. Um, so these things can pop fairly quick. Uh, one of the things that you can do, especially if you get near, near uh, zero degree temperatures or sub-zero degree temperatures, is that you can pair it with one of these uh, closed cell foam pads. And that is extra weight, uh, but it's also a protective measure as well from the ground. Not only does it, it keep sharp objects from poking your air pad, but it also provides that extra break in cold weather. So, um, so yeah, these are really good options in cold weather backpacking. So just something to keep in mind. The last option I want to talk to you about is a lightweight backpacking pod. Now I say lightweight in the sense that most people really wouldn't consider it lightweight, but to me, I think it's worth it, and here's why. This is a Helinox lightweight backpacking cot. It's the most comfortable night's sleeping I've ever had, especially in cold weather. One of the biggest reasons outside of the comfort is the fact that I don't have to fight the ground. Um, I mean, as you can see, the distance that you create is actually pretty good. And then if you're, if you're sleeping in really cold weather, uh, you can also pair it with one of these. Go ahead and uh, roll that out. So this is the setup that I used that I was talking about when I was on Roan Mountain with no tent and uh, I slept out in the open air. I had my zero degree bag with me. It was probably mid 20s with uh, probably 15 mile an hour winds, which is, you know, up there it can get to 100 mile an hour winds, no problem. So but that still made for a pretty chilly night and I was fine. Um, so, the biggest advantage to this is if you really need a comfortable night's sleep, uh, this could end up being a really good option for you if it's worth it to you. Uh, so here's one of the ways that you adjust it. So if you have the piece right here and the piece right here, um, that's going to make a firmer, a firmer night's sleep. Like if you want a firm surface, that would be the way that you want to go. If you want to sink into it, which is the way that I sleep, You'll want to move this adjustment over to right here in the middle uh, and that's going to make it extremely comfortable especially if you're a side sleeper or like i said if you just want to really like like sink down into whatever you're on so this can be a really good backpacking option don't knock it until you try it and uh thanks for watching